Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shalcross and Alex Krog. All right, everybody. Welcome to today's show. As always, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh here for the Fantasy Football Sackos. Uh, Going to have a little bit of an interesting, different kind of a show. Um, first off, let's check in. Alex, it's been, what, 10 days? How you doing? Uh, yeah, 10 days since you looked at me. Isn't that the song <laughs> or something like that? No, uh, 2020 can suck it, man. I, I don't know what else to say. It sucks. It's just, it's, it's been, it's been a year. I feel like every week there's a new surprise. I feel like every month there's something new going on and, and it almost seems like they're all competing for like, you know, just a complete, just, I just never saw any of any of any of this coming. I who could, who would, um, so yeah, just wait for a fantasy football season. It should be great. <laughs> yeah. I Not mean, to, hopefully, hopefully there is, hopefully there is a fantasy football season. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we don't, we don't really know what we're going to talk about. Like we, we have like a general gist. I mean, we, we traditionally have more of a, of a format laid out, um, but we're kind of just opening mouth and uh, putting some thought behind what we're saying today. And uh, we will get into some fantasy stuff, but yeah, um, it feels like disingenuous to just pretend like nothing is going on in the world and we're humans and we have a platform that like six people listen to. So we're going <laughs> to, and God so bless gonna, them. Yeah. Thank you so much. We love you. Um, and so we're like, we're going to get into the quarterbacks in a little bit. Um, well, but well. you know, I, I think it's good, good and healthy for people to understand where, where we're coming from on certain things um, with all the Black Lives Matter and George Floyd's death and kind of what's happened in the last 10 days um, since we said hello to each other and said hello to the world. Yeah. Um, You know, when we started this, I think you and I had a discussion and if we didn't talk about it, I think maybe I just thought about it personally, you know, watch what you tweet about, you know, watch what you talk about. Don't want to rub people the wrong way. And then this last 10 days happened and, you know, take the gloves off. I'm not afraid anymore to make somebody upset if, you know, if they're, if, if I feel like they're a, an indecent person for being a racist or for not understanding or trying to understand the black lives matter movement. Um, and if that makes me a bad person and, you know, and people are going to say, well, stick to football, don't talk about it. That's in and of itself. I, I think it, we tried, right? <laughs> we, we tried as a society and now we're we're almost to this point sitting here in, in June 2020 where, you know, it's stick to sports if if you're a. Oh, my um, God. You know, the, a the freaking Fox News. Or, yeah. In 2018, LeBron and KD are talking about non-sports issues and Fox news anchor tells them to stick to dribbling the basketball. Uh, shut up and dribble. Shut up and the, dribble. Excuse is me. Is the direct quote. And then Drew Brees makes, in my mind, just a very short-sighted, I don't, is it ignorant? It, I don't, it's how the man feels. I don't agree with it. It's not how I feel, but but then that same anchor says he's entitled to his opinion. Okay, well, why? Why is that? Uh, to me, LeBron James and Kevin Durant are two or three, five times as big of superstars as Drew Brees is. And Drew Brees has these outrageous comments. When I, he I represents, won't debate you on that, just for the record. Uh, that's fine. That's, I'll, that's, I'll let that, that one go. Maybe a podcast for a different <laughs> day. But Drew Brees represents the city of New Orleans. One of... Uh, you know, a very present, very strong, very large black minority people of color population. And he comes out with a comment about how, well, when players take the knee, I don't think anybody should take a knee. I disagree with it. It, you know, it offends me because my grandfather served in the military. Okay. Well, you know what? So did minorities, grandparents, and you know what happened to them? 
In World War II, they were told to give up their seats so that way Nazis, uh, prisoners of war, could sit where they were sitting. That's what that's what the U.S. military thought of black people. They were segregated until there was a presidential order to not segregate the military. Like, and then they yes. come home after serving in world wars and they're discriminated at home for having a military uniform on. But you're upset because your grandfather w- served. I, like the military didn't do minorities or people of color any favors. And, and, and that's to even say that it's about the military. The kneeling isn't even about it. It's not even about it. So, it's, so here's uh, the thing for me. I, we're living in a current time where we cannot have complex thoughts and you, you yeah. can't, you know, it's, there's so many things. And I said it last week that, Hey, you can use stats and have everything be one sided. And, and it kind of applies to our everyday life in a certain extent. It's like, once people feel a certain way, you're not going to change their mind generally. Yeah. Right? No, no. And so, So, like, what I think it's really good for right now is to encourage people to, you know, listen to as as many different things as you can from many as many different people as you can to try to, um, you know, just learn more and and self reflect. Um, You know, for me personally, I I have had multiple conversations with multiple people about like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to feel about this? Yeah. Um, because it's hard, and if you don't if you don't talk about it from a place of love instead of a place of hate, you're, it's just very difficult to have conversations. Because uh, I'll be honest with you, like racist people don't just stop being racist. No, no. Uh, you know, and no. so so that that's a totally separate topic. But it, it like. So, you know, people are going to be quiet for a while around this and until the, the marches stop and the, the protesting stops. And unfor- unfortunately, the rioting stops from my perspective. I wish that wasn't happening. And I, I think I can say that and be OK saying that um, because not it's not like Black Lives Matter is somewhat black and white, but not everything else is black and white when it comes to issues like this. And so, yeah. you know, you just... You just have to listen. You have to try to gain an understanding. Um, and honestly, the hardest thing for me to do was to sit down and like write it out. Yeah. Because like I'm so used to just like talking through things. But until you like write it down on a piece of paper, I use notes on my phone. Yeah. You know, when, until you actually write out your thoughts of like and, I, and I'll, I'll read it later. Um, but it, it's it's really challenging to do to. To be like, all right, what do I, be- you know, what do I believe? Yeah. Why do I believe it? How is this going to impact people? So like, yeah, do I believe, like, I feel like people have used the flag to like deflect, you know, it, it goes all over the place for me. But uh, the the biggest thing for me that, and I sorry, I, I know I'm jumping around, but so with every protest, the reason that you're protesting is for something to change, right? And generally, like, the government needs to pass a law or to um, have there be some sort of reform. Or, or an investigation needs to be reopened or people need to be charged. I mean, sure. all of these things are happening now because people are protesting. And I guess for the people that don't. I understand. I guess. Do I agree with the with the, the damaging and the looting? No. I mean, the people that are. I think the I, leaders. I wish it wasn't happening. The leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement and Floyd's own family members are saying, "Do not do this." What instead of doing that, vote. And you know, I. But I understand. I, I guess I understand it because. We, they protest silently. They do marches, you know, players take knees and people have a problem with that. And so I, somebody has a problem with whatever display is no matter what it is. So eventually you get to a point where they're just freaking fed up and, and I get it. I, 
It's, right. The, the, the two of us being uh, very privileged white males. Who yeah. Are oh, in, I want to talk know, about in, that, too. In, I mean, in, we in, rolled in their early 30s, you know. Yeah, we rolled the freaking I, I don't even know what you want to call it, the royal uh, royal flush of, uh, you know, potential discrimination. <laughs> like we're both heterosexual have, uh, hold on though i i do have a little bit of red you're, hair well, you're so. a redhead yeah, yeah okay sorry never mind you rolled a straight flush either way <laughs> like we're heterosexual white men like we, i can't i'm not gonna pre- sit in here and pretend that i relate to african-americans and people of color i i i never drive down a street and worry about getting pulled over if a cop's behind me i think it's a travesty that people have to and and that's the thing right. is they don't have to like that shouldn't be a thing, but I, so I can't relate to that. I don't have to have, you know, I'm, I'm engaged to a white female heterosexual female. And, and so we're going to have, you know, white kids. And so I'm not going to have to have the same difficult conversations with my kids that, you know, in today's world, people of color and minorities have to have with their kids. It just, it's two different worlds right now. And it should, it shouldn't be, it really shouldn't be. Um, yeah. And, and then everything, but, everything, the freaking guy in the white house is doing to just drive the wedge so much deeper, man. I just, uh, and, and, and the and talking to talking to, to bring it back to football a little bit. I, yeah. Some of the displays of of compassion put out by certain you know certain groups entities like the like the Washington Redskins, for example, saying that they stand with the Black Lives Matter movement. Their freaking team name is a slang derogatory term for a group of people. And they saying that they stand with the freaking black lives matter movement. Are you kidding me? Just, just the the hypocrisy. And then the NFL releasing statements about it when they won't, when they won't give Kaepernick a job or let the guy kneel Eric Reed out of a job. Cause he kneels like I, I, I just, I think we're finally, maybe, hopefully, at a crossroads where maybe there's some identifiable change. And, man, if every player kneels in the first week of the game or locks arms or does something. I mean, Rogers put out the Aaron Rodgers put out there how players were vilified just for linking arms. They didn't even kneel and they were still vilified over it. I mean, Mm -hmm. there's just... For some people, there's there's just no right answer, and, and and yeah, you can't change minds. And I don't, I don't think that we're necessarily trying to change minds here. It's just frustration and compassion, and I think that's what it is. He's, you know, Drew Brees' grandparents, and and he didn't go through that, and and, and he he. When he was thinking about that and made those conversations, those statements, that's how he feels in his little Drew Brees bubble of his life and what he deals with. And he thinks about it that way because of his grandparents. You know, if you if you step outside of yourself and you take it, the time to consider what the people around you are going through and what the people, you know, serving next to your grandparents are growing through, then maybe you know, you, you start to expand your thoughts a little bit and you try to just understand. So, so here's where it falls for me. I feel like we need to stop jumping down people's throats all the time whenever they make a comment, regardless of how stupid it is. Oh yes. And, and so, so even, even though you might not agree with Drew Brees, or even if you do agree with Drew Brees, then that's okay. But what needs to happen around those comments is understanding of where it comes from. And so for Drew Brees, the flag represents, you know, you know, a a great society that he's grown up in a great country. His grandparents have fought in in world wars. You know, God bless him. You know, absolutely. That's what it stands for for him. For other people, that flag does not represent those things. It represents systematic racism and, you know, not being treated the same as other people. 
and that's okay. No, it's so, not okay. That's what needs well, to change. No, no, no. But that no, I'm saying those people that that relate the flag to those things. I'm saying that yeah. that perspective is is obviously okay. Where where things need to come together then is, and I'm sure it happened in the Saints team meeting today is, and I'm sure things will leak out about it. But it's like Drew Brees has his perspective. Other people on the team have their perspective. And they, it's good to come together and talk about it and have the conversations and get an understanding instead of just being like, oh, Drew Brees is racist. Yeah. Like, you, like we, yeah. we don't always have to jump to conclusions and, on everything. And I don't and it's think like, it's. Yeah, I don't think Drew Brees is a racist. I guess it, he just, to me, I think he probably just made a very short sighted comment that really angered. A lot well, he of think, he didn't friends and family. Yeah, friends and family, but co- teammates and what have you. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Well, no. So, like, when when you're doing an interview, like, let's say we had Drew Brees on our podcast, like, and, and yeah. if he were to say that, nobody would hear it, you know. But it happened to get retweeted into the right people's feeds on Twitter, and Twitter Twitter is a made up world. Like, you know, there is. <laughs> Not all 325 million Americans or 350 million Americans are on Twitter and paying attention on a day to day basis. No, most of them are on most of them are on Facebook. I was going to say, well, there's 300 million bots on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> but but just you know, just because you're in the know and learning about things and trying to stay educated on things, like the, like I, I look at it as my goal to try to help get other people to understand, you know, where, where black people are coming from, yeah. where I'm coming from, what I've, what I've gone through, which is nothing. Yeah. But like, like, like I, I grew up and I, I honked at a cop like, you know, seven years ago cause he was going under the speed limit and brake checked me. Now if, <laughs> if I was, if I was black, like I probably wouldn't have done that no. because geez, no, uh, to, right. Even though it was a forest preserve cop, like I, they still, you know, if I was a black person, I wouldn't have done it. So like, yeah, it's okay. It's okay that I understand that dynamic. I guess. Yeah. As far as trying to, you know, educate people, what I would say is I would just go to Wikipedia and look up racism in the military, you know, for everybody that says that what the flag means and representing the troops and everything else. Well, why don't, why don't you see what, what the troops have done to, to minorities and people of color and maybe why minorities feel a certain way, even about the military. When, when kneeling was never about the military, kneeling was a protest against police brutality, you know, but yeah, I mean, my, I I was talking to my wife about this the other day. Um, and, and I, so just to like give some background, we were supposed to record on Monday or Tuesday and I literally text Jason and I was like, I can't do it. I'm too, I'm too mad. Yeah. Uh, which, which was the day that, that Trump or somebody cleared out the peaceful protesters. So you go take Bar, a picture evidently. in front of a, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, so, so you go take a, take a picture with a Bible in front of a church. I was going to say, hold on, just to clarify for all the listeners here or watchers on YouTube, Alex wasn't mad at the protests. Alex wasn't mad at the rioting. Alex was mad that uh, a large group of protesters outside the White House were cleared out. Peaceful protesters were cleared out with tear gas and and shoved out of the way. So so our president could go take a photo holding a Bible in front of a church and the church did not even know that the photo op was taking place. And the diocese of the church came out and said that she was appalled and disgusted that our president would do that, especially to his own people to take the photo. I mean, so that's that's what Alex is disgusted about. Not, nothing about the protesting. Yeah, no, thank you for clarifying. And, you know, like me identifying myself as a Christian and just being like flaming mad um, to the point where I didn't know what I literally just didn't know what to do with myself other than make a Captain and Coke and start watching Game of Thrones. Yeah, I had to start watching Game of Thrones. There we go. Yeah, if you listen to one of our earlier podcasts, I told you to turn it off because Alex was not a Game of Thrones listener. (laughs) Go on. (laughs) So. No, I, I was just so mad. Um, and, and to your point, it's like, we have to channel our energy into making a difference. And so whether that's voting, whether that's trying to educate our, our children, um, 
as as I get to bring bring a child into the world in in a well not me personally my wife does uh, in in two months. Um, Congrats! And, You'll yeah. graduate from sacco to sack daddy. Sack daddy, I like that. <laughs> do do a little dance. Uh, so no, it's you know, and and all we can do is you know the generation behind us is has done so much more than our generation, and and there's still people living that that grew up in, in segregated high schools and, yeah. and, and had different water fountains that they could drink out of. Like it's going to take time. Yeah. Like racism dies with the people that are racist. And so, you know, as it, as there's fewer and fewer people that are passing, passing racism down, like it's going to continue to get better. I hope, but we're, we're, we're just in a, we're just in a time that, we need to have understanding and, and it's okay to, you know, maybe say some things that you shouldn't say to get that understanding. Cause you have to talk through it. You have to write through it. You have to read through it. You have to listen through it to get a different perspective that maybe you didn't have before. And it's okay to change. Like it's okay to change your thinking on, on it because you grow up a certain way and then you become your own person and then you start to have your own family. Like your perspective sh- should always be changing on something. There's no reason why you have to believe the exact same thing you believed when you were 14. Like, and, and if you still believe the same things that you believe when you're 14, then grow the fuck up. Like <laughs> it's okay yeah. to, to change your mind as to what you believe because you become your own person, you become like you become the people or you become more like the people that are around you. And so if you're just living in a white bubble, which for the most part I am, you can, you can do that, but you still have to understand what's going on outside of your bubble. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, that whole white bubble of growing up white heterosexual male men in the far western suburbs of chicago who our high school was in the middle of a cornfield i mean it it doesn't get any more you know secluded you know isolated than that I mean, right and 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 all the black people were expected to be the best athletes on the basketball team and the football team yeah and you know, there was and, a couple in in every grade and that that was it i mean we we weren't exposed to it yeah. So I, I, I don't know really, like, obviously we, we wanted to talk about it. It's a super complicated issue to just say that, you know, there's nothing going on in the world and to just try to talk about fantasy football would be super disingenuous. Uh, and 100% you know, agree. Right. So, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to, to, to label the podcast breeze lives matter or what, what we're doing, but no, I don't want to, I don't want to insult the movement, man, but, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, you gotta, you gotta have a little bit of fun. No, the, the biggest thing is, and I, I don't know if we're transitioning to quarterback rankings or not, but I, I, I'm proud that I drew breeze at 13. Um, I don't know if one of his linemen is going to pull the, remember the Titans move and just move out of the way and let Akeem Hicks go and break, Drew Brees' arm or something, so I'm 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 proud of uh proud of my ranking at 13 there. Yeah, just for, he's just in, for the record, he's in some hot water. Um, you got Alvin Kamara on following him on Twitter. <laughs> I, <laughs> you got several teammates doing that. I mean, it it's it's going to be interesting to see really what ramifications if if there are any long lasting with him yeah, because I, of this. Yeah, I I just want to reiterate one more time just to like use this time as a self-reflection, write down what you believe, write down why you believe it. Um yeah. and you know, that we we're we're in such a meme culture where you make a point that's like less than a sentence long or most of the times not even a sentence. And we we just we try to use pictures to express our feelings that are so basic. Yeah. that are not complex and like you know the ones like a venn diagram of black lives matter i support troops and i reject rioting and i'm here in the middle it's like yeah that that's good but it's okay, like it's 
it's much more deep than just three little prepositions that lead to your point. And yeah. until we start trying to understand ourselves better and understand the people around us better, we're just going to continue to, you know, repeat the same cycle that's been going on in our country for centuries at this point. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to try to get on a statement. I mean, I, I guess I tried several times to, to come up with something, you know, concise and clear. And, and I really just kept throwing it away because it, it, it really didn't even describe how I, how I really feel about it. Um, but it's okay to start there. Yeah. I but guess I just want to say that, like, I want to try to understand more. I feel like that's a great start. Like, it's just i'm I've, I've never really been exposed to it you know being a white male growing up in the country like i f- am 100% behind the movement and believe in it and i think it's ridiculous that people are afraid of the police and uh, you know and i think that the systemic oppression is just unfreaking it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, it's 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 one of the things that and you know cell phones and and there being a yeah. high a, a high quality camera on everybody's <laughs> cell phone and everybody's recording things all the time now. Yeah, and you know, for for people like you and me where we didn't grow up, um, being subjected you know, to that, correct. And yeah. so you know, it's one of those things where we don't want to believe that it's a real thing. Yeah. Because until we see it, you know, a lot of times it's with everything until we see it happening, we don't believe that it's happening. Yeah. And once you see it happening a couple times, you're like, oh, man, yeah. that kind of sucks. Yeah. And when you see it happening over and over again and it, and it's not just to black people, it's it's to stand, it's to Hispanic people, it's to people of all ages, races, nations, I mean, sexual white, orientations, sure. all of it. Right. So it like happy pride month, by the way. Hey, same to you, (laughs) but it's like, and, and to the people that are listening. Um, Absolutely. But, um, yeah, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's so complicated and we, we just want to do better. Yeah. (laughs) That's all right. So we're going to, I think maybe try and try and leave it there. Um, Alex and I want to do better. We came into this, you know, this is a whopping episode five. (laughs) Still, still haven't self canceled whopping episode five. And, and, uh, you know, when we started this, we thought maybe about trying to stay away and uh, from all of those really divisive topics. But I just, at the end of the day, I don't think that that's really who we are. And I don't think that's really who we want to be. Um, so that's, I, I guess those are our, that's a, almost a half hour of thoughts with the set goes, <laughs> but which, which, you know, if people turn this off and they don't listen and that's fine. Um, yeah. And no, I, I, one thing I would just say, and if, if we said something that might've been insensitive there, like I apologize yeah. that, that comes that, you know, that, that comes from a place of ignorance and, and like, please call us out on that or like reach out to me or Jason individually um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, whether you have our cell phone numbers or you can reach us on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, like, yeah. and if, and if you're having a tough time, like dissecting or understanding how you feel like it's a, like, we're here, man. Like if yeah. you, it's, it's not an easy thing. And, you know, if you don't have somebody to talk to about it, um, it, it's really hard. And if you like, you, you can't just internalize everything cause it, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. And it's okay to believe something else than, uh, than, than we do. Like, I yeah. still want to talk through that with you. I, and for anybody that's, uh, you know, maybe looking for a little more clarity on the black lives matter movement and what exactly is going on right now, I would just recommend that you listen to Malcolm Jenkins response to Drew Brees. That, to me, it was a clear explanation of why he feels the way he does and and why, why the, the movement is happening. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's talk football. Let's, let's talk fantasy football, not, 
not hypocrisy and all the shenanigans going on right now. It, um, it, see, it seems like there's going to be a football season. Um, of, we got teams ma- going back to the facilities. Yeah, of, of all the major sports, they're the ones that are least impacted by anything so far. Baseball is looking at a lockout. NBA looks like it's coming back and running through October. Uh, hockey um, ratified. I think they ratified their their playoff structure, so they're coming back. Um, so it it seems like we're going to get football, which um, my goodness, the country needs it at this point. Yeah, it's interesting because there's already college teams practicing, and so like so, I went to Iowa State. I guess uh, for for the listeners, I went to the Iowa State University oh, of Science and it. Technology. Stop it! It's the That's Harvard the of the one, Midwest. You are disrespecting the. It's Winnipeg the State Harvard University. of the Midwest. It's the first land grant university. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. Anybody? I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Also, Il- Illinois State claims to be the Harvard of the Midwest. Oh so come on! What? I, maybe I mean, doing beer bongs. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's just ironic that they're both ISUs and they both think so highly of themselves. Uh, okay, first off, they have uglier red than we do. Second off, we have a much better looking bird for our logo than IS than I, Illinois State does. So I don't want to hear it. Anyways, I'm just I'm just sticking up for sure some of my friends that I know are Illinois Stadians and they they I, I got <laughs> your back Stadians. And I, I think Illinois State actually has a better football team too because they, oh, haven't they won Oh shots Haven't they haven't they Fired. won some, some titles in whatever division they're playing in? Yeah, I don't know the NAIA is that even a D1 division? Isn't that like a I don't know a glorified D3 or D like lower end D2? I don't know um, what it is. It's not. I don't think it's an FBS. I, I don't know what it is, but um, hey, ch- championships matter, and I don't think Iowa State has any. So wow. Okay. All right. I see you. I'm here. How, how many does Winona State have? <laughs> can, so can, so thanks thanks for asking. Can, can uh, somebody if, pick out Winona State on a map? <laughs> okay, stop it. It's it's in Winona, Minnesota. It's in Minnesota. It's, I would. <laughs> What? It's it's right on the Mississippi River. Okay. For the record, and so and is that this, east or west? It's north. I'm just messing with you. Go on. I know where the so, Mississippi River is. For the record, the Winona State University basketball team won one championship up, one year that you wrong, were there. Wrong. Well, actually, that's right. But well, so they the basketball team won the year before I got there. Uh huh. They want they went undefeated to the title game. All right, now hold on. Question: Is this are they a Division Two? Yes. Okay, so Division it's not D one basketball. No, it's Division Two. The Cyclones play D one basketball, no, ladies and now. gentlemen. Yeah, but they they beat the University of Minnesota at the University of Minnesota. Okay, but the University of Minnesota is not good at basketball. All right, but I digress. So one one in two thousand five. Went undefeated in the title game in 2006, 2007. They were up seven with 42 seconds left and lost in regulation. Oh! If you've never, if you've never watched it, you have to YouTube it. We'll we'll tweet that it. That is on, a collapse on the on the sackos. Oh, it was more than a collapse. I I drove or I rode out there on the bus, <laughs> uh, and then the next year. Uh, I made a bet with uh, one of our mutual friends that what uh, they'd make it back school. and win. Well, I bet them that I would pay them five dollars every time they lost, and I would pay. And th- if they paid me twenty five cents for every game we won, okay, where where'd you come out at? We went thirty eight and one and won the title. Oh, so wait, okay, so uh, so I won four dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> You were almost, you were almost at nine fifty. That one well, loss, and, we, and I the the one loss was to a D three school because they were hung over. Oh wow! So if in totality, we're so on before Division we two basketball just, on an NFL yeah. fantasy football podcast. Yep. D two tell me basketball more. history. So in totality. The, the Winona State University basketball team won 57 games in a row until they lost in the title game. And then they went 38 and won the following year. So they would have won like 105 games in a row. And but they lost and they didn't. But yeah. uh, we'll, we'll tweet it out. It's one of the craziest videos. It pops up 
basically every year around March Madness time. Um, oh, such such a it's the the guy that beat him. Uh, his last name was Atkinson. Ended up becoming a Harlem Globetrotter. Oh so, wow! So there you go. Well, I'm sure that all four of our Minnesota fans listening to the show are very. Uh, very appreciative of your Winona State University shout out for the last five minutes. All right. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta. Oh have. my God! I'm Ladies grab and it. gentlemen, hold on. Please watch right. the YouTube. Oh my God! You got this. Why do you have that right by your computer? Winona State, <laughs> 2006 national championship hat. What do you want, huh? <laughs> Do you, do you have anything that's, with the that's highest? Akin. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I hold do. On. You, do you, you have anything with a with an Iowa State title on it? I I don't think you do. So, just this this is fantastic. If you're listening to this, by the way, and ladies watching. and gentlemen, 2015 fantasy football league champions, Manpreet's welcome is the league name. This is my trophy, just as esteemed. This has nothing to do with what we were talking about. It's just, it means just as much as your 2006 Division II basketball team hat does. If anything, this has more value than your 35 cent hat. You can't wear the trophy on your hat and keep the sun out of your eyes. Jesus Christ. (laughs) This is the most... How do we go? We went from polar extremes, <laughs> one extreme to the other. I that, got up and walked tro- away during a podcast recording to pull a fantasy football league trophy and put it on camera. That this trophy is, is not functional. It doesn't do anything. It just sits on a shelf Come and collects dust. He's the inspiration for our new logo. Look at him. Oh, the 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 Sacco stickers. Oh, all right. And if you if you haven't noticed or followed us on social medias, we have a, we have a brand new logo. Please check us out. Uh, we got a little uh, special surprise for all of us our for all of our Minnesotans at the end of the show. This hat is so comfortable. Is yeah. that trophy comfortable? Yeah. <clears throat> There's even a little warrior uh little warrior symbol on the side of it. You're so jealous. Looks like it collapses just as well as the 2005 Winona State basketball team. (laughs) Wow. That's rough. That is just... (laughs) Oh, that's going to be the longest running joke in the show. Oh, my God. All right. Let's... So, last episode... We spent entirely too long talking about our top quarterbacks of the year. By and by we you mean you. Come on. I was not bad. Your it, your freaking your your reasoning for Lamar and Mahomes and one which one's which is because uh, you have Lamar at two because he's the Madden cover athlete and you have Pat Mahomes over him because of that. Yeah. That's logical. And <laughs> for if you haven't watched it on YouTube, one of my buddies said that he went back and watched your reaction ten times because you melted down. And <laughs> because it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Just like a pulling thing. a 2006 Winona State University ball cap off your wall. Not everything has to be logical. Oh no, it doesn't. It, it like it's all about gut feeling, and sometimes your gut's right, sometimes it's wrong. So it happens. Do you, after the shenanigans that was the last episode, all 90 glorious minutes of it, are there any changes that you would make to your top 12 based on the discussion that we had? And so, for ladies and gentlemen that don't have our, their, our top 12 rankings in front of them, I'll see one if I can't put them up on the screen. And two, I'll see if, or, or I'll just remind you guys that uh, we posted them on our uh, social medias, uh, Twitter at the FF Sackos. Would you so, make any changes? No, I, I thought okay. I was going to. And yeah. I, I think the answer is no. I, I think um, you know, you're you're very influential in the way that you talk about things. Yeah. Um. So a- after we were done recording, you had my uh, had my head spinning. Yeah. About because it's stat stats, man. They they are a thing. Yeah. They get me. To get me going. Breeze averaging over twenty points a game wasn't good enough for you to move him up into a quarterback one, huh? 
Uh, no, just because I, I saw what he looked like against Minnesota last year in the playoff game, and I trust my eyes more than I trust stats. Okay. All right. You're the, still not, the, you're still not the, Ryan Tana thrilled? Oh, my God. I thought that was going to go away. <laughs> the Oh, by the way, social media, I, I know we hired somebody else, but like – Literally, they're putting like Tana thrilled on everything at this point, and it's yeah. their their job is in jeopardy too. Or they're to find somebody else coming over to the good guys. They like so, they like me. It's my dashing good looks. My God, <laughs> um, the the thing that I stand that I'm even stronger about is that after the top three, it doesn't matter. And I, you have a bunch of different tiers, and I, I think that maybe we should get into that a little bit. Of, for me, the after the top three, they're all the same tier, and you have how, what four, five different tiers in the top twelve. Yeah, I have Lamar Jackson in his own tier. Yeah, and so I, I he's think, so he's so good. Yeah, and I, I think talking about why why we have a difference of opinion on that's important okay personally probably so like why 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 do you have five different tiers of your top 12 i I think that's i think that's way too many i don't think there's that big of a difference between any of those guys so i don't understand why you have tiers drawn drawn where you do i love it all right so uh I have Lamar on his own tier because it's going to take a quarterback to throw 50 touchdowns to come close to putting up as many points as he's going to put up. I feel like his points are more repeatable than a quarterback going out and putting up 50 points. If you've listened to our, I think, second podcast titled Don't Draft Lamar Jackson, we talk about that in more depth and simply because uh, he was the only quarterback to put up uh he put up seven. He put up more than thirty points in seven games last year. The the next highest quarterback, the the next quarterback that put up more than thirty points, uh, only did it in three games, or six six games, not seven. Or what no, was that? sorry, three. That was that, I was showing two three. Oh, two three. Oh, you had me confused. It was uh, Danny Jones alone had uh, did it three times, and then there was a bunch of guys that did it twice. So. Lamar Jackson, again, it's just it's just I trust the rushing yards. If uh I assume health. I'm not gonna assume some guy's gonna go out there and get hurt because we also in the last episode talked about how Lamar Jackson didn't get hurt, but but a lot of the pocket guys who take less contact all got knocked out for portions of last season. So that's why I have Lamar at number one in his own tier, just because I think the the points are extremely repeatable. Um I have Mahomes and Dak in their own second tier. I mean, Mahomes could have been in the Lamar tier if he didn't have a down year last year. Um, I don't know. His last year just didn't really... I don't really know if it justifies the number two rating overall. What does is the year before and the eye test, if you look at Mahomes. Um, If you look at his stats alone, I don't think you put him at number two overall. But uh, Dak... Easy schedule. I mean, great offense. They got more weapons, weapons more freaking coach. weapons. Yeah, better coach. McCarthy likes to throw it more. Um, I think so. Those two, I think, are in the second tier for that reason. My third tier is Brady and Breeze. That's just team, team old, I, <laughs> team I, old, I, old guys. I, I started ripping people in drafts when they just take a bunch of old people a long time ago. <laughs> And you have to start planning for the future and try to identify the next good people. Yeah. And I, I think when it, when you're well, taking those, a, those next well, good when people are when the one both, and two. Yeah, when they're both 40 years old, uh, maybe are going to lose some arm zip. At some point, they're going to get bad. That's that's why I wouldn't take them high. But you have them in your third tier, so you're so you're you're looking at. You know, sixth, seventh round, uh, eighth round. Uh, I, I think here. I would take Tom in the eighth. I, if he was there, I, I don't know. I, somebody's going to like Tom in your draft when they think about what Jameis did last year, having his own 30 for 30 special, 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions. And then they're going to say, I think Tom could probably do better than that. And, and Jameis was quarterback five, would have been quarterback two had he thrown 20 less picks, which is the, the Tom Brady average. So 
you know, uh, Drew Brees averaged more than 20 points a game. He was Mr. Consistent. I mean, he was, he was unreal last year, but again, I don't, I, maybe that's, I, I don't, maybe I don't that's think high. you're going to take. Uh, so h- h- this is the only argument that I have for you. I don't think you're going to take them in the seventh or eighth round because you're going to say, I would rather have Ryan Tannehill in the 12th round. Than See, I'm glad you brought up Mr. Tannehill because. God, stop saying that. Am I looking at something? Something in my gut is maybe, maybe having me less thrilled about his six overall ranking. Yeah. Cause it's wrong. So I'm, I'm debating. I'm actually debating. I'm moving him down to, uh, um, to like 15 where he belongs. Uh, probably the bottom of his tier. I don't think I'll D tier him, but I'll f- probably just move him down to 10 and move everybody else up. That's because you're afraid. It's it is. It's a lot of afraidness, and he salvaged like four games with a rushing touchdown. And I don't know how many rushing touchdowns I'm going to bet on Ryan Tannehill to get. So there's that. Uh, you know, there were several several games in there where he had less than twenty passing attempts, and I, I, yep. yeah, it's hard hard to. Granted, he threw for two or three touchdowns in those games, and so that's going to you know buoy your points, but. It's hard to be a monster uh, if if you're not throwing the ball a whole lot. So I think he'll yeah. stay a quarterback one for me. I love the offense. He was super efficient and put up a ton of points last year. Um, but I, I think the ceiling is what I'm concerned about. Mr. Consistent, though, I, I, I see he's like, I think he's going to be like a poor man's think, Drew Brees. I think the fl- Oh, my gosh. I think the floor is concerning, too, because if he's only going to throw 18 passes in a week, it, the, the floor is like three point weeks. Honestly. F- Hold on. No way. Where's my uh, here we go. So in 10 games, he only he okay, he scored less than 20 points in half of them. And but four of those five that were less than 20 points were 18 or more. So he was he was consistent right around the 20 point mark. Just don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, I get it. I just think it's a good team. I think it's a good offense. I think it's going to get better too now that with a full year of starting and a f- 10 games, 11 games to learn the system last year. So Yeah, he also he also get paid a ton. And, uh, True. Uh, like, I'm going to be honest with you. If somebody uh, walked in and said, uh, hey, uh, I'm going to give you $20 million to keep podcasting. Um, I don't think my podcasting would, would continue to get better. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no. And we're not the Joe Rogan experience. I don't know if that'll ever happen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Kyler. I like Kyler, but I don't like Kyler. I think I would move him to six. He could be better than that, but he could also be worse if he doesn't get better at getting rid of the ball and not oh, getting charged with 23 sacks. Same. Well, that's why they're all in the same tier. Oh. There, it's just one giant tier and you're going to be Russell fine with and Carson them. Wentz. Carson Wentz could be so good. I watched I, somebody tweeted out a highlight video of what Carson Wentz looks like when he has skill position players that are NFL caliber and like healthy. It was nuts. But uh, and then for me, there's a, a tier line there just because of question marks after um, Matt Stafford. I don't know. I have cliff concerns there. Danny Jones, he had really high ceiling, but he also had kind of a low floor in a couple games. Um, Aaron Rodgers, I think he's my 13 Aaron Rodgers. He could be moved down, but I, uh, I realized after the last episode, I never got to talk about Matt Stafford. So let's get into it. He averaged almost 20, 21 points per game in eight games played. He had no games above 30 points. However, in five of eight games, he put up between 20 and 30 points. So again, to that consistency, which is, I think, a a little bit more what I'm looking for. Uh, He does have Galladay, who's a monster. And also uh, Hawkinson or Hawkinson, uh, the tight end. 
They got a new running back. Yeah, I like carry on, but I don't know. I, I Stafford with the consistency again, averaging almost 21 points per game is just super appealing to me. And I think you can get him freaking free. You can get him and Danny Jones for free. I think at the end of drafts or maybe yep. in like the 10th or 11th round. Yep, and and not pictured in your listing is Deshaun Watson, Ben Roethlisberger, Josh Allen, bad, Jared bad, Goff, bad. Gardner Minshew. Jer- don't don't tell me that Jared Goff is good at football. He had four single digit games in a row. Come on, man. If there's one guy that does not belong in your list, it is Jared Garf. Jared Goffel. He's Goffel. I don't so, know what where I'm trying to come up with, but he's yeah, not good at yeah. football. When when you're thrown to Robert Woods and Cooper Cup, you're not going to be bad. Um, well, you, he had you them to, last year, and he threw four single digit point games in a row. So he wasn't he wasn't was that good they, football? They were having some serious issues on offense, and those were all against very good defenses too. I want to add. Oh, um, oh yeah, were they? Gardner yeah. Minshew averaged a whole whopping sixteen and a half points per game last year, and you got him at number eleven. That's correct. <laughs> That's so bad. They're going to be behind in every game. And he's so and he's going to throw a pick because they're going to be in prevent defense. <laughs> like no, he's going to get a ton of cheap yards checking down to Fournette. Uh, and DJ Shark yards do, aren't do, worth do. hardly any. I mean... You got to be throwing tutties, man. That's just not that's not a potent offense. Do you, do you, would you like to make a bet on Gardner Minshew? Yeah. Okay. I'll bet you that Matt Stafford, my 11, fi- finishes higher than Gardner Minshew. Your 11. Done. What? <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. What are we? <laughs> Jesus. If. All right. Fine. If. Uh. If uh, if you lose, you have to go with the Gardner Minshew mustache. That's fine. I'll shave that <laughs> off right now. <laughs> you got to put the Minshew mustache in a podcast. I love it. Sure. So you see. So all right. So why do you think that all these guys are the same? You don't even care at all. Deshaun Watson, top eight, even with losing. Yep. DeAndre Hopkins. Really? They're going to have to score somehow. Well, I don't think they're the, scoring the, a whole lot. I, I'm much man. I'm I'm much more comfortable taking somebody that's done it before that is a proven winner. And I, I know that doesn't translate into fantasy necessarily, but again, it's a lot of it's gut feeling the, those that's just where I came in. I, I looked at last year. He was fourth last year. And I just can't see him being that substantially worse this year. I can't see how a guy is going to be worse at doing quarterback when you take away the number one receiver <laughs> from his team and replace what? him with the guy that's one headache away from no longer playing football. Here, it's, instead of doing the Gardner Minshew bet, I think that I'm going to have more top thing, top 13 quarterbacks than you will have top 13 quarterbacks. And so my mine include Deshaun Watson, Roethlisberger, Josh Allen, Gardner Minshew, Jared Goff, um, and yours include Matt Ryan, Stafford, Daniel Jones, and Aaron Rodgers, and Tannehill. So we're talking six through thirteen, or yeah. six through twelve. Are we? Are you? You don't get Drew Brees, and I don't get Rodgers. So just top twelve. Sure. I kind of want to tweak them a little bit because because mine are more correct. No, because I think Josh Allen is going to finish in the bottom half of the top 12, but he's not going to put up any freaking points in the last five, six weeks of the season, which is why I have him ranked in the teens because nobody's going to play him. So like, yeah, Josh Allen, you know, is going to finish probably as a QB one, a low end QB one but it's because the first month of his season is freaking easy. And the last month is awful. So what you, what everybody just heard was you taking 20 seconds of their life just to say, Alex is right. Oh, wow. I hope you don't argue with the misses that way. 
Oh, oh my goodness. No All comment. Right. Uh, fine. Well, if you have Josh Allen on any of your teams, you have to start him in the playoffs uh, nope. against Pittsburgh, Denver, and say, New England. I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Garbage. He's going to be so bad the last two months of the season. And he's going to be so good to get you into the playoffs. Yeah. And you can figure out the rest later. Yeah. Because all of them are the same. You'll find somebody else to replace the production. Yeah, maybe. If you want to be wasting fab and and waivers on quarterbacks and playing the quarterback carousel. That's why you save the sauce. (laughs) All right. Well... I'm uh, I'm going to let you give the last word here. Anything else you want to put out there on quarterbacks other than they don't matter? Uh, no, quarterbacks don't matter, uh, but all black lives do. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to uh, go to our little social media page here. Uh, you'll see our brand new logo. We are the Fantasy Football Sackos. As always, please follow us on social media at the FF Sackos on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And for all my lovely Minnesotan fans, please go to YouTube. You'll check out a, a nice little Minnesotan version of the Sacco for you. Um, with that, thanks for listening. Peace. <laughs>